evening. Um, I'm very, very excited to hear from these presenters. And they'll, they'll tell you more about themselves. So I'll just tell you why I wanted them to talk. I think we've been bugging Brian to talk for well over a year now. He's going to hide under his hoodie now. And Xander has so much enthusiasm for this topic that um, when we were originally chatting about this, like I, I was pretty much jumping up and down with excitement about what you know they're going to tell us about. And I think that you're all going to find this inspiring as well. So Xander, Brian. Anytime I talk in front of other humans, I like to kind of give the disclaimer that, um, so I had to take a public speaking course in college and I got like a cool 2.5 in that, C plus. <laughs> um, so just a fair warning, like this doesn't go well, you've all been warned. Um, He's better than me. So, um, and I guess what we're gonna talk about today, um, a little bit less CICD philosophy and a little bit more um, one particular tool that we use at Target and even outside of that, that we both really love and that we're just really excited to be able to share with the community um, and hope that some of you guys may uh, adopt this eventually. Um, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, let's get started. Oh, no. Does it forward not click? There we go. So, yeah, I, like I mentioned, we're um, in the theme of tonight. We're here to talk about some uh, CICD tools that we make use of. Um, and uh, I'm sure you've all recently been to other tech talks. Um, so part of this is definitely, if you want to click... No, because <laughs> um, there's containers, and that's that's very much a requirement these days. Um, when you give a tech talk, you have to talk about containers. So we are fulfilling that obligation, hopefully, um, and and talking a little bit about Docker as we talk about um, some CI/CD tools that we're working with. Yeah, um, let's just get it out of the way. Docker, 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 Docker fairies. By the way, other containers work. It's the best. I mean, yeah, the daemon does die from time to time, but when you bring it back up, it's really quite worth it. Um, <laughs> It's pretty, yeah. Um, so obligatory about us slide. This is definitely also another modern day tech talk requirement. We have to give a little bit of an intro. Um, I'm Xander. My last name is Dravinsky. Um, if any of you can repeat that back to me after this, I'll give you a free beer. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a senior engineer with Target. Um, I've been with Target for um, coming up on three years now. Um, I work primarily on our CI CD tools team. Um, it's kind of an ambiguous, weird thing. Um, but uh, I guess any of the tools that engineers use to uh, deploy to our, our cloud platform, um, we kind of maintain and own the, the server side for. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's a little bit about what I do. I'm going to have Brian give a little bit of an intro here as well. So this is awesome because Xander wrote the slide. <laughs> uh, so like him, I'm a senior engineer at Target. Uh, I'm actually a tech coach in the dojo, if you guys have heard a lot about that. I tend to spend a lot of my time teaching teams how to do these kind of like core capabilities, continuous integration, continuous deployment, getting them spun up on the newfangled thing that happens to make their jobs a whole lot easier after they learn it sort of thing. Uh, this is tr a true statement. I wear exclusively purple t-shirts and hoodies. It's all purple. Uh, yeah, and I do like to teach and yell about test-driven development, and continuous integration, continuous deployment. I do so on a daily basis. That's more on that if you guys want to talk to me after. <laughs> so I guess um, to kind of give some context, I want to talk a little bit about what CI CD has looked like in the past at Target, um, some of the patterns that we followed previously, and why that kind of drove us in the direction that we've been going since then. Um, so I'm sure you guys are all pretty familiar with that guy there, um, Jenkins. Uh, we, we know and love him at Target. How, um, many, how many people use Jenkins right now? That's, yep. OK, cool. This talk is correct, because it's about 90% of you. <laughs> <laughs> so currently, um, CI, CD, and Target, you just keep clicking. Um, <laughs> so this is kind of an expression of what we have going on right now. Um, four huge Jenkins masters that all have a series of shared build agents that add up to this just nightmare. It's really bad, you guys. Um, if you've ever worked in like a massively shared environment with thousands of other engineers, it's about as bad as you can imagine. Um, we've got somebody that runs a build on one of these shared build agents, and if there is a gem install in that process, Everything goes to shit really, <laughs> really fast. Um, Jenkins wasn't really designed as like a multi-tenant 
system, right? Like you can certainly run a, a good number of, of jobs in there, but when you're dealing with thousands of engineers building their projects within one environment, it becomes almost impossible to maintain things. And as an engineer on the team that does maintain it, I can really tell you, like, it's, it's a pain. Um, and so we've currently been kind of refactoring our Jenkins setup too into a containerized solution, Docker. Um, <laughs> so things are, are getting better there too, but it was kind of this looking at what we're currently doing with Jenkins that drove us to look for alternatives that might alleviate some of the pain of a massively shared environment that persists um, changes that people make there, which is really damaging from time to time. Um, you know, not to knock our engineers, but users are users, right? Like things are gonna happen, um, especially when operating at the scale that we tend to. Um, so. Hey, quick, quick question. How many people relate to this slide? That's not quite 90% of you, but definitely a lot of you. I mean, I, I'm really not trying to knock Jenkins, and a part of it is Target's implementation of the tool. Um, but, you know, we've had some pain from it, um, and we've learned a lot as well. But, Woo, yeah. shared environments. No, not good. Um, so when we kind of explored um, what pain points we were having with Jenkins, and where we could kind of go from there. We, we stumbled upon this tool called Drone, and I certainly cannot claim to be the person that brought Drone into Target. Um, there's a couple engineers that kind of stood up in a, a drone environment, um, and that grew a lot faster, I think, than any of us were expecting it to. So um, for those of you that are not familiar, um, Drone is a fully open sourced CI CD tool written in Golang. Um, it operates uh, within a Docker container, and it actually, um, executes staged builds each within their own separate Docker container, each stage of the build. Um, and so I think the, the power that that gives you is um, you can fully customize the environment for each stage of your build. Um, you can define a Docker image, it'll look like whatever you want. Um, and it's completely ephemeral, right? So like if something, you know, this environment that you're executing the builds in um, dies at the end of, of your build. And I kind of of the opinion when it comes to engineering that like, you know, everything dies, right? So we should probably just embrace it. Um, and uh, it, it allows us to really kind of operate in that multi-tenant way where it's like, it doesn't really matter how many people we have using this tool because um, things just go away after the bill is executed. Um, and that's pretty fantastic. Um, anything do you have to add there, Brian? So for me, the big, big win here is going from a giant shared Jenkins environment where you have potentially hundreds of special snowflake little slaves living out there that if you're lucky are somehow managed with a configuration management tool and corrected when something goes wrong into something that is completely, nope, I'm going to spin up a container, run this one little step and throw it away. Uh, that in itself is such a colossal win if you've ever tried to maintain something like this. And I haven't, thankfully, haven't had to manage Target's gigantic Jenkins system like Xander has, but I've managed other Jenkins systems. Even at small companies, they can get nightmarish extremely quickly when people are like, well, I need this one little thing. Okay, well, now just throw it in a Docker container and you're good to go. Yeah, and the thing it we deal with is like plugins. Like, How what, many plugins do you guys have? What Stack Overflow question told you you needed that plugin? I, why do I have to install it for you? Like, this is the kind of thing where it's like the, the short-lived nature of this is really beneficial. I have seen 250 plugins on a Jenkins master. I have seen uh, them where we need this specific version plus this specific version, and if you upgrade either one of them, everything else breaks. I've seen nightmarish things done to Jenkins that it was never designed to be done. I know this sounds a little sales pitchy, but it's an open source tool, so I promise I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's just cool, and we definitely want to share it. Also, there will be demos later. Bam. So here's um, a, a dashboard that we actually had to get approval from our principal engineer to show, so you're welcome. This uh, a very well thought out hip chat message went into bringing this to you today. <laughs> um, so Oops. here is a little bit kind of a view of um, the growth of drone over time at Target and kind of um, the kind of the scale up that we've seen. Um, so the couple areas that I just want to point out, um, all-time builds, we're at 133,000 as of this morning. Yes, yep. we finished the slides this morning. That number is going up by thousands a day. Like, we do literally thousands of builds in this thing every day. And this was a super small thing in Target, like, yeah. two months ago. Um, and then activated repos are another <laughs> thing. So we're at uh, 
almost 2,000 um, activated repos in our private GitHub Enterprise instance right now. Um, so the, the growth has really been, I think, a lot faster than any of us anticipated that it would be. Um, and this kind of goes into a little bit where, like, um, I certainly can't verify this. I think we've probably scaled drone um, a bit further than a lot of other companies have at this point. Um, and um, there's definitely been a lot of work that's gone into actually working with the maintainer of the project um, to kind of help us scale this out beyond what, what many others have at this point. Um, we had to kind of work a little bit with how drone handles messaging queues, um, things like that to actually make sure that we can operate at the scale that, that we're doing. Um, and like while it's been a challenge, I also think it's definitely been a really cool experience for us to be able to kind of contribute to that community a little bit um, and uh, explore scaling out an open source tool in this way because um, it's beneficial to target it's beneficial to the broader community um i don't know i think it's we have cool. definitely encountered things that have resulted in changes to the drone source code yep. uh we have several people who are active contributors uh you're going to see a little bit later on there's a plugin that i actually wrote that's in the process of being open sourced uh, we use other open source plugins constantly it's fantastic i love it this is why i'm here talking about it yeah, we actually got some, some metrics that show um, the, the decline of usage of our, our shared Jenkins environment versus the growth of uh, the drone environment. Um, and while these environments will continue to live side by side, it's kind of interesting to see the change in, in user numbers. Yeah, so where are we at here? What does your guys' pipeline actually look like? Does it actually look like that? Or somewhat vaguely like that. Like, I realize this is a bit of a simplification. Bridget's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. So you're, we're going to go make changes. It's going to go into something like get a source code control repo. There's going to be some testing. And then hopefully somewhere along the way, it gets deployed somewhere, in this case, represented by the cloud, because obviously cloud. So this is kind of like a, where the CF for the 90% comes in. And I definitely realize there's like a bit more going on here. <laughs> that there is represented in this graphic. Um, but it's kind of an expression of like, you know, we think about application development at Target and maybe elsewhere and what that typical pipeline looks like. Um, and some of the stuff that people are doing with Jenkins is so far beyond this. Um, and, you know, you think about tools like Travis or any of those other um, CI tools that are out there that people are using with open source projects. And oftentimes um, the pipeline does look a little bit like this. Um, pretty basic. You're going to be developing your application, pushing to a version control system, and then have CI run whatever tests you want, and then um, in a perfect world, right, deployment um, right after that. Uh, so this is kind of, I guess, <laughs> the simplest representation that we can have of that. Right. And so I want, I want to really emphasize, we're talking about the 90% case here. Like when you're working at Target and you see something like 2,000 active repos, like I'm not going to try and go out and solve everyone's unique individual case. My role, especially in the dojo and tech coaching, is largely about how do I get most people to where they need to be right now. So a, a huge chunk of my last six months at Target have actually been how do I get to the point where I can teach somebody who's new to this CICD in one day? And... Uh, Again, you'll see a demo that'll hopefully blow your minds a little bit. So that's kind of like the high level goal of this in my mind. And I know like Xander, your perspective is a little bit different as coming from somebody who's maintaining some of the other tools that we're using inside Jet or inside Target. So I think this is also a good opportunity to kind of address some of the shortcomings. Um, so some of those, those snowflakes or those edge cases um, in Target's environment. So things that like maybe drone doesn't fulfill would be like Windows builds. Right? That exists. Everything You're... is executed within a Docker container, <laughs> usually based on Alpine. Um, so Windows builds aren't really going to work. iOS is another big one that kind of stands out. Um, not really. We don't have a way to do um, Mac OS based build agents yet. Um, so this is really cool. 90%. Right? 90%. We actually did a demo internal to Target, and I was demoing right alongside Jenkins' team, and we were constantly being like, hey, actually, this isn't the 90% case. Like, you guys want this? And the Jenkins group was like, no, you guys are 90% case. Try this other thing. It'll get you there quicker. That's right. The 90% is like a Spring Boot application, right? Like a Spring Boot API. Who here uses Spring? Wow, I expected more. Okay, who, who here <laughs> uses something that you can run in a container? And if you don't know, the answer is probably yes. 
<laughs> okay, cool. It's, it's better. That's closer to our 90% mark. Feedback. All right, so we're gonna actually do a little bit of a live demo here. Um, hopefully this goes well. I, um, it's kind of- Demo awesome gods. Why. Um, so I think, yeah. Okay, you want me to take it? Sure. All right, so a question related to basic building blocks of CI. What I am talking about when I talk about CI with teams that I'm working with is you are going to develop code, you are going to push that code up into some source code management system. We wanna make sure that that code works with whoever else is on your team integrating with it directly. And then this particular case, what I'm talking about, that 90% case is push some code up, have it tested with other code that you and your team have done, publish an artifact, deploy that artifact to some place. Does that answer the question or do we want more detail? You may need an artifact repository. For this case, uh, no, but you would need a PaaS, like some place to actually deploy it. That artifact, you don't actually have to archive your artifact, although it's generally a good idea. Uh, I've done demos inside of Target where we didn't, and that might sound scary. We actually scary. often use Drone to push our artifacts to our artifact repository. That's yep, and I've done it. Test pass. And in open source world, like if your artifact is a Docker container itself, you would just push right up to Docker Hub or to some other private registry. If you're hanging out on Google Cloud Platform or for an AWS, it might be a slightly different artifact. Who knows, maybe you're using the newfangled Spinnaker coming up from Netflix and you're publishing RPM somewhere. Uh, these, are, these are all like, I'm trying to talk in, in the super abstract sense and maybe that is a little too far. This is certainly um, a simplification, um, but I think, I guess we're trying to express the general pathway that this follows. Um, maybe there, there's definitely some in-between steps, but. Um, oh yeah, and CD is way more complicated than CI and anyone who <laughs> says that's not true is wrong. <laughs> So that, that particular case, like, uh, so I'll, I'll actually be doing two demos, one of which will be CI, like setting up CI on a brand new job, brand new like repo, and the other one will be CD, and the CD one is pre-built because I'm actually using it right now. So, <laughs> so yeah, you'll, as, you'll see the difference in complexity pretty quickly. As uh, Brian alluded to, I think, so for our demos here that we're gonna go into, um, uh, gonna be kind of a show off of drone, but it's gonna be kind of drone at, at its simplest. Um, very, very basic CI in a very short time frame, And then uh, yep. what happens when you start to add some more complexity and you start to kind of um, use the, the real power of that tool um, and you want to go a little bit further than simple CI. Before we dive into this, are there more questions? Or do you guys just want to see some stuff? See some stuff, yads, okay. All right, this still work? People in the back? Holy cow, awesome. So we get to uh, demo gods time here. How readable is that? Yeah, sort of. Okay, so I got a thumbs up from the back. This is the dumbest possible Java application I could think of. I'm like, public static void main string array system without the print line. Hello from Java, yay. Does not say hello world? Like how? Ah, uh, for, f whatever. <laughs> so, so you know it isn't all scripted. <laughs> uh, s straight out of the book. Really, IntelliJ doesn't let me zoom that? Okay, so uh, anyone who speaks Java, I'm using the Gradle wrapper. There's a Gradle W build command to actually build this thing. And if I'm on my dev system, that's all cool. If I can spell, what we do, we do a clean build and probably a run and then it will print out hello world. No big deal, right? So the whole point is that I made this repo today. It's actually a repo on, oh hey, I didn't put run because I'm not very cohesive right now. Okay, there, it printed out your hello world message. I know it's really small. I actually don't know how to zoom it because that would be cool. Uh, so what I'd like to do is like, this is a brand new repo and I want to set up CI on this repo and I'm gonna try to do it in like five minutes and if somebody wants to time me, that's cool, but I'm gonna be explaining it as I go. 
uh, when I teach teams this, uh, I actually have them on the keyboard, and my record is three and a half minutes. So <laughs> uh, let's just see what this thing looks like. I'm going to, off the top of my head, make a new file. For some reason, IntelliJ thinks this is a Go project. But I'm going to call it .drone.yaml. Everyone familiar with YAML? A little bit more real. <laughs> Heather's timing me. Thanks, Heather. <laughs> OK. Uh, <laughs> pipeline. There's a, there's a keyword. Uh, what do we want to call this thing? Like the actual step that does our build. Build. build yeah. Heat. Build. I want to throw out real quick that this is probably pretty similar to how Travis does things. So you look at tools like Travis, you know, they also build in a container. But like the part that you get here, like Travis forces you to use the Ubuntu container. Um, this allows you to completely define every step of your build process in your own way, which I think is pretty cool. Anyone on Docker Hub right now can tell me if I'm doing this right. The OpenJDK version 8. That's the Docker image out on Docker Hub right now. Yep, that's right. Cool. Uh, so we've got a series of commands we run around in that. You know, thank you, because I did it on the other thing and for some reason just assumed that it worked. Uh, OK, OpenJDK builds that. And I'm going to run some commands inside of this container with my code as a context. So I'm just going to do that same command that I did. Gradle. <laughs> Clean, build, run. Yeah? OK, cool. Gradle W. I'm using the Gradle wrapper. And there's actually a really important reason for that, because the OpenJDK image doesn't have Gradle on it, which means that the Gradle wrapper is actually going to go download the tool, Gradle, that does this build for me. All right, so uh, I have the drone command line installed on my machine, and I'm literally just going to type drone exec. And uh, if I'm properly connected to everything and no proxies get in my way and everything is fantastic, this is going to actually go download the Gradle, was that 3.5.all specified in some properties file somewhere in this Java repo, and install that on this container, run Gradle W clean build, and then throw it all away. Everything dies. Everything dies. Embrace We're it. just embracing it here. So uh, who believes me that this is CI? One person, two person. OK, what am I missing other than it's all local? Tests, yeah. So Gradle Clean Build actually runs tests. And I didn't write tests for this, which actually like makes me ashamed. Because I am like a TDD guy, and I just wrote Hello World without a test. I promise the one I'm demoing later has tests. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So this is going slow, probably because, oh, there it goes. It just all dumped at once. It's going to run through Gradle. It's going to do the clean run. It's going to tell us out, hello world, I hope. Yeah, sweet, hello world. One for one on demo gods, sweet. All right, so um, that's great, but I did that all locally. We want that integrated with our source code control system. We want that such that when I do a push or maybe, oh, God help me, we're doing a code review. Like, maybe this thing should pass. So I'm going to go set that all up right now. Hey. We're okay on time, right? We're okay on time. I'm not doing like terrible. I will close you. All right. So I'm gonna flip over to get. This is our GitHub Enterprise instead of Target. What I'm actually doing, and I think I'm actually going to go over to Drone first. Drone5.target.com, which you guys don't have access to. I'm sorry. But this is actually a good chance to talk about yeah, you how talk about this. easy it is to stand up your own drone instance. And I actually, I haven't tried it myself. I run it on my own server at home. But you can run it incredibly well on like a $5 DigitalOcean droplet. Um, and they actually give you the Docker Compose file on their website on how to get it stood up. And like you can honestly do it in under 10 minutes. Like it's, it's a really, really easy tool to stand up on your own. Yeah, by the way, everything you see under my name is just crazy nonsense stuff that I do in my spare time trying to test stuff out. So you're not getting any secrets, sorry. Uh, so this is that repo that I just made earlier today and where that code actually lives. And uh, I clicked a button. Now who believes that CI is done? I, I see some smiling. I clicked the button. Yeah, we're actually working on a way to make this button clicked by default. I'm actually not kidding. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So hopefully this mic is working OK in this regard. And I'm going to go back, and I'm actually going to git branch drone test. Wow. Check out, yeah. Thank you. Check out dash b. 
What did I change? I changed the drone file and I changed Java, okay. I, for whatever reason, fail to type miraculously anytime anybody's watching me, so I apologize. You and everyone else, it's fine. Yeah. Back to our drone repo. We should see a magical thing come through. I'm going to make a pull request. Everyone doing this kind of stuff, hopefully. Yay. Reviewing stuff. Oh, by the way, I totally set this up so I don't need approvers because nobody's going to approve this in five minutes. Um, OK, so there's something really interesting that's happening here is I've got this little dot right here. It's telling me that there's a drone job running. I mean, look at that. It just printed out Hello World. Like, from the PR. Wait, what? Yeah, no, so seriously, all the webhooks were done when I clicked that button. Like, from that point, I was done. So, if you're keeping track, it was like two minutes ago. <laughs> uh, who here reviewed this? Yeah? We all did. You all reviewed it? Because none, like, I have merging blocked unless you do a code review. So, I'm going to use my magical admin privileges to, uh, to merge it anyway. And then another really interesting thing is going to happen. If I go back to drone, it's going to run again. Drone. What am I doing? Yeah, here's build number three. You might be wondering where build number two happens. The drone actually runs for every PR and for every push, which means that when I actually push that up, that was a job. And as soon as I open the PR, that was another job. Anytime any of those change, so whether you're getting a pull request coming from an external fork, still running. You're all, all your branches, all still running. Merged it, it just ran again. So like this is it. This is this is actually CI. I just did CI for a brand new repo in front of your faces in like five minutes. And you can define the tests any way that you want. In yeah, absolutely. Like You've got that control. And so we were talking a little bit about drone and wow, that's the wrong thing. That's the big one. So what if you want to run a completely separate step? Anyone want to pick a new image? I don't know. So this is this could be where. Um, you could utilize like the drone Docker plugin to possibly build and publish your container image to Docker Hub or a private registry, um, something like that. So that's it. If I were to push this, by the way, this is the job that gets run on the branch that I just pushed it to. If somebody makes a change to a PR or in a PR to the drone file, that's the version of the pipeline that gets run. This is actually, not only did I do it that quickly, but it's also inherently codified in your repo, which is, if you guys have, anyone dealt with the Jenkins job DSL? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> in comparison, how does that feel? I hope it's good. Okay, I got big smiles from certain people. Uh, cool, so that's CI, right? But we want to show you guys something a little bit more complicated. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. Yeah, we can really add some complexity here and, and kind of show what we can really do with this. So I have a fun little project that I would love to have open source, but it actually isn't. And you're going to see it all anyway, um, called Hello Cloud, which is my example internal to target about how to do CD. Now, this is what I use to help teach people continuous delivery, continuous deployment in a day. Uh, this drone file is 100 lines long, and that seems like a lot, but I'm going to tell you what it does. First off, it builds a Go binary on every push, every pull request, everything else. As soon as it gets merged into master, it builds a Docker container, publishes that Docker container to a uh, artifact repository. We're using Artifactory and the Docker registry plugin or something for that. Publishes it there, immediately takes it, deploys it to a Kubernetes test environment, then runs tests against it again. This is like the fourth time tests are run. It'll then deploy it to another Kubernetes environment, run tests against that, and then it will promote it all the way to our production environment and run tests against it again. The entire process takes about five minutes. 100 lines of YAML. So this little blob here. Anyone built Go stuff recently? 
Okay, so for you guys, this probably makes a little bit more sense. Go, or C Go enabled, I don't need the C compiler, it's all just native Go code. Uh, I give a test URL, and actually this is like the first thing I do anytime I interact with a new project, is I figure out how to write functional tests that hit it when it's deployed somewhere else. So in this case, I'm just telling it test locally. I build it, I actually run the entire application locally inside the container in a background process, and run tests locally back against it. Sweet, this happens every time there's a push, every time there's a PR, anything else, and this one actually does have tests, I swear, you will see them fail if you want me to. Next step, this whole block is doing a Docker build and publishing up. This is an open source plugin. It's the, well, surprise, it's the drone Docker plugin. Uh, this will only execute when there's a push event to master. For the most part, that means somebody merged something to master. If you're pushing directly to master, shame on you, I'm sorry. Uh, doing a couple things, there are secrets in drone. Drone natively handles secrets. So if you are coming from the Jenkins world where you're trying to fight with credential management because, okay, maybe there's a plugin and then sometimes you still see them output in logs. Uh, native, built from the ground up right there. Uh, I'm not gonna go through secret adding. There's, there's walkthroughs online for all of that. This goes through, it actually tags because I'm actually doing continuous deployment, I am not touching a version number. I'm actually just going to deploy with the commit hash. The first eight digits of the commit hash, to be exact. This is an internal to target plugin that I am currently working on getting open source. There's a drone Kubernetes plugin. Since we started this, there have been two more open source drone Kubernetes plugins. Yeah, there were a couple of us that came together to run yeah. this plugin, and it's been pretty beneficial to, to us internally at Target to be able to go from drone straight to Kubernetes with. Um, actually like real continuous, continuous deployment. But yeah, like Brian said, we've seen a couple plugins pop yeah. since then. It's definitely a pattern that people are pretty interested in. Um, yeah. Immediately after that, this is our dev system. I'm gonna run tests against it. I'm passing a test URL that points to the DNS. Ouch, sorry. That points to the DNS entries of one of our Kubernetes clusters, specifically a test cluster. And then I just copy paste these two blocks a couple more times for like a staging or a, or a rehearsal style environment and a production environment. So with that, what I want to do is change production. So this, this little thing actually runs in production and I like take support calls for it. If this is down and doesn't work, I can get paged. Fun story. <laughs> Even though it's a little example up. So this is categorically uh, silly in how simple it is. There's a super small JSON payload, which is giving back some basic information. Like there's a greeting, there's a location that's like a configuration between different environments. Uh, a host name, so you can actually see the host name change here as it's actually behind the load balancer. Like this thing is actually realistically available all the time. Uh, I did some secret demos in case somebody was like, hey, how do I get application secrets to my thing? Like, yes, I've got you covered. This is all, this is all doable still entirely within your code. The only thing about everything I'm showing you that isn't in code in this repo is that secret. And that's because I don't put my application secrets in my source code control. <laughs> There's way too many people laughing at that. No, it's kidding, it's great. Uh, there's that first eight digits of the commit shot that built it, and then I put a timestamp because somebody asked me to add a timestamp one time. But, uh, so let's change this thing. What do you guys want to change? Also, please don't ask me to change secrets. It's not interesting because it's not in the code. Let's change the greeting. He wants to change the greeting, do you guys? AV is hard. AV is hard, okay. <laughs> Sweet, I can work with this. Um, and I promised there would be tests, right? So here's actually a fully functional test that checks for that greeting. So was it AV is hard? No, AI is easy. <laughs> oh man, don't auto do that. I've also tested this with the beer emoji. It does work. <laughs> yeah. Shame on me for copy pasting, but I'm going to go to hello. I'm gonna drop that greeting right in here. Oh, IntelliJ commands, don't fail me now. Okay, get checkout branch 
AV. I don't know. I'm going to call it AV. Okay, so it's like, I guess, a get flow, but the cool part is about to happen. So if I go to this repo, we should see if there's code change. I'm going to do a pull request. Anybody going to challenge me that it needs more review? No? All right, so all checks have passed except the ones that haven't registered yet. Eh, my push one worked. I'm not really worried about the PR. It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to push it. Congratulations, you guys just changed target production. I'm done. <laughs> From here, I'm watching it. Do you want to jump over the build? You, no. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Push to master. You should actually build this C. You know, we're, we're putting the Docker image together. We're uh, deploying to Kubernetes. Um, yeah. All right, we'll go on bigger here. Uh, it's already built the Docker container because it's tiny, because it's a little Golang app. And hopefully demo gods, right? Because there are some systems behind the scenes that actually have to work for this to, he hasn't been paged yet. Yeah. All right, so we're actually in the middle of doing a rolling deploy to Kubernetes. It has four and a half minutes to complete before I scream at it and, or it fails. And we should actually see real-time updates coming out of this. So it's waiting for a deployment spec to be updated. If people haven't used Kubernetes before, this is like the default rolling deploy that comes with Kubernetes out of the box. So we should, we should be seeing fun times here. Oh yeah, and in case there's these other things going on, there's actually an auto scaler for this. Um, I actually have tried to knock it over, I can't. Um, <laughs> Interestingly enough, there's also a kill endpoint. If you know where this is, you can just do a post to the base URL forward slash kill and it just nukes an instance. So, yeah. yeah. Monkey for Kubernetes. It is automated. It, uh, that's actually a true thing. We There is a team inside of Target that set up an API for change management and uh, I do want to give this advice because there are places where you can't do that, where it literally is a human being push the button. My challenge to everyone where there's a human being to push the button, make that button so obnoxious. Like, oh, I'm getting another, they, wait, didn't this just deploy five minutes ago? Yeah. Make that button show up in their inbox so often that they say, just go. <laughs> and, and when you get to, and, and there are patterns for doing this even inside of Target that I've said, like, instead of letting it trigger off of the push to master. Let it push off of a get tag. Uh, drone has a hook directly for tags. You will be able to grab the version right out of the tag and then use that for the rest of the build pipeline. It gets injected as an environment variable across all build steps. Uh, that's actually what I recommend if people are, are, are struggling with, hey, but we really need somebody to push the button, right? Uh, it's, it's a journey, right? Nobody is just gonna magically go get rid of all of their change management. <laughs> So as actually, could you actually pull up the, the drone plugins page? Um, so drone has an actually fairly active plugin ecosystem, and these plugins are really just Docker images that are built, and and often it's just shell commands being executed in these images. Um, it, it's pretty cool. Um, oh man, that's mine. No, <laughs> that's yours. Plugins.drone.io. So here's kind of plugins. A list of that currently exists out there. Um, we've got some engineers within Target that maintain some of these. Um, but you can kind of see like where you can really go and so, where the power in this tool is and like the strong community that's developing behind it. If you're building a Java application that is still using a WAR file or you just want a standalone Spring Boot jar file and you just want to publish that as your thing, Artifactory plugin, it's used fairly extensively inside Target. I can personally vouch for it. Uh, Jake McCann, a Target employee, wrote the one for Chef. So if you want to use Drone to build your Chef cookbooks for config management for other longer lived systems, Awesome, great, here's a way to do it. Oh, he also wrote Claire, which is a Docker security scanning tool. Uh, hey, Cloud Foundry, you've got one. Hi, Bridget. <laughs> See, these are the two like drone Kubernetes ones that have popped up since I since built this thing. Yeah. You want to send a, an email with Gmail? Cool. You want to send a Slack notification? I hear people really like Slack. 
There's Slack integration, there's HipChat integration. I actually am really confused about the Jenkins one. I have no idea what that does. <laughs> Like we kind of want to know what it does, but it's also like there's a rabbit hole. We're just gonna sit yeah. right over that and not even. My guess is it's there to trigger down like other Jenkins jobs for the other ten percent, the things that really this paradigm doesn't quite work for very well. There's rsync. Uh, there was a Terraform one in here. Marathons out there. Literally just SSH. Like I, I've seen a legacy system inside of Target fully automate continuous deployment by using the SSH plugin, logging into the machine, doing the commands that they would normally do during deployment. I'm like, cool, but you did it in a day. So like, that's a start. We'll work on the rest of the stuff coming up later. Uh, so there's a ton of stuff going on out here. Did I lose my job? I hope not. Where are we at? All right, so this is actually the production cluster. So it's gone through a test cluster and deployed and run tests against it. And now it's into production cluster, and we are waiting for replicas to come up. I actually slowed this down for demo purposes because GoLang containers go so damn fast <laughs> because they're tiny. There's like zero overhead. All right, and then it goes on to a high availability cluster, and then we actually load balance between two different regions with this little app. I know that sounds crazy to have a hello world thing load balance between multiple regions. But I had to so teach how people this. You deal with that huge TPS you're getting on Hello World. Basically, oh yeah, like set up Gatling, knock it over. It's awesome at auto scales. It's fantastic. Uh, so if we go back to this little thing, AI is easy. AV is hard. So that's running in the target production system. There you go. Preface, uh, going with a team from zero to this in a day is hard. And it usually involves a lot of hair pulling and a lot of frustration, but I have done it. It's usually a week, but we're working on it. So yeah, like we said, I mean, at the beginning of the talk, like a little bit less CI CD philosophy, a little bit more just us kind of sharing um, a tool that we really love with everybody and hoping that we can kind of um, grow the community behind this tool. and. Um, Maybe some of you will try implementing it where you work and uh, contribute to the community in various ways. We do have a lot of lessons learned about this particular tool. For example, this is not at version 1.0 yet. It's coming very soon. We have word from the main. Yeah, we're 0 0.5 right now. We're on 0 0.5. 0 0.6 is out and includes a whole bunch of fixes that we found the problems of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's that. Like, so you yeah, said, while we're going to production, the tool itself is still not 1.0. Um, it's coming, coming very, very, very soon. So soon, trademark. I think that's, that's about right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this went from nothing like six months ago to running thousands and thousands of jobs every day. So this is what we love. And this is why we're like, when we talk about CI for the 90%, if you really just need to run a build thing, build an artifact, push an artifact somewhere, deploy an artifact somewhere, this can get you there very, very quickly. And then With you can a lot go of on control to over the environment that you do it in. Like it yeah. Like also, I've never had a build fail because the environment conflicted with some other build. Nobody ran a bundle install. I've actually run a bundle install inside of a Ruby container to do a build in Ruby, or Chef, or whatever else you guys want to. Do with Ruby. So there are questions. Yeah. Holy crap. I did not hear that at all. What kind of trail and auditing do you do? First off, all the jobs are logged. All of them are backed up. Is Bridget interjecting? I'm, I'm just saying we have two mics here if you count that one. So I'm going to take this back. Sweet. Uh, so there are a bunch of APIs inside of Target that handle some of this stuff for us including like, hey, we're going to go request a change, go into production. We're going to log what change is happening. Here's the get SHA that's being deployed and the thing that isn't being deployed. Uh, for the most part, that is primarily what I've interacted with in terms of actually logging and everything else. By the way, this is our Kubernetes environment. Literally everything my application logs, including its startup, gets dumped into an enterprise Elastistack. And it's just available for everyone inside of Target to look at. So we actually keep everything for like 90 days. And then beyond that, it's more of a direct API call out to something else to sort for longer term. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. 
something, 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 I heard a name. AWS something, something. This is, this is deploying directly to Kubernetes and doesn't have to be on AWS. It also isn't necessarily on AWS. In fact, I think these are in our data centers, but whatever. Cool. Okay. Do we we probably can take a couple more questions before we take a short break and then go to our next speaker. Apologies. So. It was a bit of a long demo. Oh, it was great. Oh, we got a lot. Oh, no. If we don't get to you, please come find us afterwards. We're happy to answer any questions one-on-one, -on -one too. Legit. This is kind of rhetorical, but now you show us how this would look without using drone. <laughs> how would right? this look without <laughs> using drone? Okay, so without using drone, the way that this thing would work for me is I would probably have two completely separate repos, one of them containing just Groovy, specifically the Jenkins job DSL, to codify a series of jobs that form a cohesive pipeline. I would still have to make sure that somewhere along the way there's a plugin configured in Jenkins to actually look for those changes inside of inside of get or whatever version control system you're working on. Then it would have a completely separate repo that actually contained my application code. I still wouldn't know what the heck I'm going to do with secrets like my username and password to deploy into Artifactory. I know there's a credentials plugin, although uh, myself and I think a couple other people have been accidentally burned by having credentials somehow show up somewhere and somebody having access to them. Just like, oh, hey, by the way, we were trolling through, or the get admins were trolling through Jenkins admins, I'm sorry, Jenkins admins were trolling through these configurations and found a bunch of plain text passwords. At that point, you need to buy HashiCorp Vault, and there's a whole other tool. So there's HashiCorp Vault. There's a whole other tool. Um, I think that that would about do it, although I'm still probably ending up writing a bunch of scripts to deploy into a Kubernetes environment. So first, a great presentation. Thanks very much. Um, a question about how you chose drone. I think there's other tools out there, like Bamboo comes to mind. There's more. Um, what in particular about drone drew you to it? And did you look at others, or what was the what was so the decision matrix? I actually didn't. I came in on the tail end of the group that prototyped it. Oh, the question. You got the question. OK. So uh, Jake McCann and Jack Spiro, who were both previous. Well, Jake is currently there. Jack Spiro was previously a target employee. We're playing around with it. And I came in to target right about the time that they started to play with it. And they were like, hey, you want to do something cool? And I'm like, sure. What are you doing? Oh, we're trying to do this CI thing with this new tool. All right, cool. Let's look at it. So personally speaking, uh, there's things like GitLab CI. There's Travis CI. There's a few other ones. Like Even Jenkins has gone to something like the Jenkins file style thing, which is a step closer to this and having your pipeline codified in your repo, but uh, I think that's still like coming. Jenkins 2.0. Well, I think the other thing to note is that at this point, we, um, so initially a couple of people kind of stood this tool up and, and we liked it and we had a lot of success with it, but since then we, um, we've built pretty strong relationships with the maintainer of this tool and the, the broader community as well. And so I, I think that's something that's certainly not to be underestimated when it comes to like Kind of try to scale this out further is that the relations that we have with this community have been um, amazing um, in terms of kind of pushing this forward. And Shout out yeah. to Brad, who's a who's probably not here, but <laughs> lives in California, is one of the primary developers. We've had back some back and forth. You can get him on Getter too. Like they have their own chat thing set up where there are questions for this. There's a user group. A whole bunch of the target employees are in there. I'm in there. Okay. S solved all of our problems very, very quickly. Or I shouldn't say all of them, 90% of them. Hi. I see you are building Java code. There is another possibility to uh, build another uh, kind of source code, like C Sharp, something like that? L like which? C Sharp. C Sharp, yes. Uh, I believe there is a container you can build C Sharp in now. I have to double check that, though. It's no, really no, no. only limited by what you can run in a Docker container. Right. No, no, no. But yeah, I'm talking about the, the build, the compile. You are compiling. Yeah. You are compiling Java. Yep. So if I have C Sharp so called, I can build with this? So that has to do with a Docker container that contains something that can compile it. So like the Java ones are all out there and available on Docker. I believe, I seriously think this, if somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, that there is a C sharp one out there right now. Yeah, I got a thumbs up. .NET Core. .NET Core, thank you. That's the name of it. Okay. I'm sorry I don't live in the .NET world. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But he just said it'll the, compile the 90% thing is because redundant. You are uh, compiling. Yes. So if you can compile another language, it's yep. good. Absolutely. You're so limited by I've what you can build and compile within a Docker container. That's yep. So I've done Go, Ruby, Java, Scala now, because I did that one Scala thing at one point. Um, oh, I think it's still JVM based. All I think right. that's all I've done recently. Thank you. We're, we're here for questions after, I promise. I'll, I'll, I will be here. Xander Thanks, will everybody. Be here. Thank you so much. <laughs>